So I got her from Czech Republic on her first birthday, and um, they have been gone. They, the, first of all, Lily was, has always been the boss, and Eva's just looking for someone to tell her what to do. So they have been, they're, they're inseparable. Well, uh, Lily had uh, a little, I mean, you can imagine trying to find something on, under all this hair, and she had a little lump, just kind of right here, and it felt like a... Uh, uh, what I know is a lipoma, a fatty. It just it sort of felt like a little fatty tumor that, that you figure dogs get. And, um, and I didn't pay it any mind. And then she got a lump here, different. It was, it was like a little chickpea underneath. And I thought maybe it was a, like a big pimple or a cyst or something. And, uh, but they were both different. And then I was grooming her and I found there was another thing under her chin that it actually had scabbed over. It was, it was bleeding. So it, I knew it didn't look good. So I went to, um, I went to my vet, and um, they took out this one and this one at my vet, but they sent the the work to um, to the OVC, uh, the vet college, and they came back that they were both mast cell tumors, which are cancerous, and that the, the what they call the margins, the edges of the tumors were were still dirty, so they they couldn't say they were clear. So she had to then, she went into Guelph and we found another one uh, that I thought was nothing much. And it uh, turns out she had three mast cell tumors and before, they, they were wonderful, before they operated again, they did, they did blood work and they did x-rays and a biopsy just to make sure that it hadn't spread because if it spread, you figure you, you're not gonna put them through this. But it hadn't spread. So she had major surgery a year, about almost a year ago, it was a year ago in November, major surgery. And uh, I got her home and then I found, like about in January, I found another lump on her leg. So I took her back in, she had math, again, her leg, and um, she had to be confined and she didn't, they looked like it hadn't spread, so they didn't look at chemo or anything beyond that. And uh, she had to be pretty well confined to a, a cage for, five, six weeks, I think, like I mean, on and off I let her out, but they, she couldn't run, she couldn't do anything because of the, the fear that these incisions would split. So at any rate, she seemed fine, out of the woods and, um, you know, healthy, uh, so you can see her now, it's a year. And Eva, uh, my other one, who has seemed healthy, like everything about her is healthy, except that she broke her leg um, eight years ago when I first got her in a freak accident and she went to Guelph and they again were wonderful. They did surgery and she had steel plates and she had <clears throat> this in her arm. And then every year it just was something that seemed to go wrong with that, the foot and then the leg. So I kept on like looking at her and she had a, an infection in her toe bone. So she had that taken off um, two years ago. And then she just, come back. And so at any rate, she just, um, you see her hopping. She, um, Eva, she, um, she started being lame again. And uh, I figured it was just the same old fracture. And I took her, took her in and they said, come on babe. They said um, that they were concerned it was a cancer and I wasn't expecting, I just wasn't expecting, you know, that diagnosis. It was devastating to have it with Lily. And um, they told me that. So uh, they did uh, an x-ray, they did um, 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 a lot like a lung x-ray, they x-rayed her leg and it, um, the diagnosis came back that it was, they were 90% sure that it was cancer. And of course, you're all hoping for that 10%. And um, they, they said she was obviously in so much pain, even if it had been something related to, because it was the same leg, if it had been related to the original fracture, that she was obviously in, in, in pain. If she had a bone infection, the end result was she was, um, she would probably either break the leg by accident, or she'd be in pain. So um, we found out on, I guess it was the Monday uh, <clears throat> and Friday, um, she had her, um, her leg removed. And uh, we brought her home on the Tuesday morning and she practically breaking down the doors to get out of there. She's as happy, you can see, this is, it'd be two weeks tomorrow. And um, 
she's had chemotherapy she, um, this week and um, they said to expect if there were any complications that maybe the day five she would, she would start to feel nauseated. Nothing. We've been, um, you know, touch wood so far, so good. But having a, a cancer diagnosis for yourself or your children, like you think when your children is devastating, like how can you deal with that? And when you have a cancer diagnosis of your pet, some people think, oh, it's just a dog, how do you cure that? Well, you know, they knew how they cure it with a needle or a, or a bullet. And um, you, you make all these decisions because you think I can't put, you, you love them like your children, and you don't want to put them through um, agony just to make yourself feel that you've still got your, your best friend or your child. So I believe me, I have agonized, and you also look at not, uh, you, you can't listen to people who maybe say uh, that you're being cruel. This is, am I being cruel? Like two weeks, two weeks after, um, and if I'll know when she doesn't act like this, if she doesn't play, either one of them, if they don't play and they don't eat, then they're, they're, not, um, they're not in good shape, and then you, you go to the next stage. But um, there's, there's, uh, there's life after cancer diagnosis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And we could say, watch, watch this. Who wants a breakfast? <laughs> <laughs>